go yourself. Is that clear? You are about to watch the most controversial interview that Elon Musk has ever given. He talked about all of his companies, including Tesla, and this one is a must watch for all Tesla stock investors as well as all Elon Musk followers. We've been friends for 16 years, um, and I promise you I'd be here, and that's why I'm here. Well, I appreciate um, you being here. Not for any other reason. But, but let me ask you this, this then. Let's, let's just let's go, go at it. Just tell me what happened. You, you, you write this tweet that says that this is the actual truth. People read that tweet. Yes. And they say, Elon Musk is an anti-Semite, that he, 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 is, he is riling up this base. You're hearing it from, uh, as I said, the White House. You're hearing it from Jewish groups all over. Um, I think Jonathan Greenblatt from the ADL is here. Uh, there's, there's lots of people who say this. And by the way, it's not just that. Did you uh, read the whole thing? I did, and that's why I want to ask you And the you responses. About Excuse me? I said more. More responses? Yeah, I said more, I said more than what you just read. Yes, the, no, there was, abs there was absolutely more. Yes, yes. Um, but I'll tell you the thing that struck me. It wasn't, um, and I'm an American Jew, um, it wasn't just the people who, who had the, that view. It was actually people who, ha who really are anti-Semites, who said, oh my goodness, go, go Elon, this is fabulous. And that actually was the thing that really, uh, really set me back. I said to myself, What's going on here? And I want to know how you felt about that in that moment when you, when you saw all of this happening. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, I did clarify uh, almost immediately uh, what I meant. I would say that that was, um, you know, if I could go back and say I should, in retrospect, um, not have replied to that particular person um, and I should have uh, written uh, in greater length as to what I meant. Um, I did subsequently clarify it in replies, uh, but those clarifications were ignored by the media. Um, and essentially, I handed a loaded gun to those who hate me, um, and arguably to those who are anti-Semitic. Uh, to and for that, uh, I'm quite sorry. I, that that is not uh, that was not my intention. Um, so I, I did, you know, uh, post on my primary timeline to be absolutely clear that I'm not anti-Semitic. Um, and that I, in fact, if anything, am philo-Semitic. Um, and the trip to Israel was planned before any of that happened. Uh, it, it was neither here nor there. Do you see, you see this thing? Mm -hmm. Do you know what it is? I do, because I actually followed your entire trip to Israel. Right. Why don't you tell everybody? This is, uh, this says, it says bring them home. The hostages. It was given to me by the parents of, of one of the hostages. And I said I would wear it as, as long as there was a hostage still remaining. And I have. Um, what was that trip like? And obviously, you know that there's a public perception that, and, and you're clarifying this now, um, but there's a public perception that that was part of a apology tour, if you will. That this had been said online. There was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f*** yourself. But go f*** yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob. If you're in the audience. Well, well, let me ask you then. That's how I feel. Don't about, advertise. How do you think then about the economics of, of X? If, 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 if part of the underlying model, at least today, and maybe it needs to shift, maybe the answer is it needs to shift away from advertising. Um, if, if you believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who uh, have this view, G what do you do? F Y. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too, <laughs> right? Yes. No. No. It, it, I, I mean, Linda no, Yaccarino's right here, and she's got to sell advertising. I, I, absolutely. So, um, no, no, totally. So, so, no, no. Actually, what what this advertising boycott is uh, is is going to do? It's it's going to kill the company. And do you think that the company? But. And the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company, and we will document it in great detail. 
But there are, those advertisers, I imagine, are going to say, they're going to say, we didn't kill the company. Oh, yeah? They're going to say. Tell it to, tell it to Earth. But they're going to say that, they're going to say, Elon, that you killed the company because you said these things and that they were inappropriate things and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform, right? That's, see, that's and, what and they're going to say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. So let me, okay, this, then this goes back to we'll the. Ma we'll both make our cases. Right. And we'll see what the outcome is. What are the economics of that for you? I mean, you, you have enormous resources, so you can actually keep this company going for a very long time. Would you keep it going for a long time if there was no advertising? I mean, if the company fails because of an advertiser boycott, it will fail because of an advertiser boycott, and that will be what bankrupted the company, and that's what everybody on Earth will know. But what do you think, then, of the... I, I guess, this goes back to the to idea exist. of trust, though. Then it'll I, be gone. And it'll be gone because of an advertiser boycott. But, but you recognize that some of those people are going to say that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform. And I, I, wonder, I just wonder and ask you and think about that for Tell a second. Tell it to the judge. But the, but the judge is going to be... The uh, judge is the public. And you think that the public is going to say that, that Disney is making a mistake? Yes. And they're going to boycott Disney? They already are. Well, there are, there are some that are for, for, for lots of different reasons, but you think that this is going to, that you have the, this goes to actually the interesting of, 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 of power saying, and leverage. Let the chips fall where they may. Let the chips fall where they may. Can I ask why, why that is the approach? And I, I ask it because you've been What's very- What's the other approach? Well, you've been very particular about, the, I mean, the approach to Tesla, uh, when you think about the engineering involved in that, the approach to SpaceX, the approach to, um, some of the stuff you're doing with, with AI has been very specific, right? There's not a let, let the chips fall where they may approach to those businesses, I don't think. No, we focus on making the best products. And, and, and Tesla's gotten to where it's gotten with no advertising at all. I understand that. Tesla currently sells uh, two, twice as much uh, in terms of electric vehicles as the rest of uh, electric car makers in, in the United States combined. Tesla has done more to help the environment than uh, all other companies combined. Uh, it would be fair to say that, therefore, as a leader of the company, I've done more for the environment than everyone else, and, and any single human on Earth. How do you feel about that? No, I, no, how do I feel about that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking you personally how you feel about that, because this goes, we're talking about power and influence and... I'm and saying, I'm saying what, I, what, what I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. Fuck them. Okay? okay let me ask you th th this, because I think part of this, by the way, there's some people who said, look, owning X to begin with has just created problems, that you've created so many amazing things that are changing our world. And, and, I, and I know you want to uh, make X uh, this fabulous town square free, free speech platform, but that unto itself that that has created such a distraction of all of these things. This is the conversation we're having. We're not focused, or we're not, not talking at least yet, and we will. Uh, on Tesla, you have your Cybertruck uh, deliveries tomorrow and everything else that you're doing. But yes, is there any- it will be the biggest product launch of anything but by far on Earth this year. Is, it, is there any part of you, though, that just says, ah, you know what, I just shouldn't have done this, or maybe I should sell it or give it away or do something else with, 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 the, with the X piece of it? Yeah. Given, given, given the propensity for some of the things that you do and say on that platform to create these, these issues. Yeah. Of all the posts uh, I've done on the platform, I think there might be 30,000 or something like that. Right. Once in a while, I will say something foolish. And I have. And I would certainly put uh, that comment, um, the, the, you said the actual truth, uh, in, among perhaps one of the most foolish, if not the most foolish thing I've ever done on the platform. Um, I, I, and I did do my best to clarify uh, f afterwards that, uh, you know, I, I certainly do not mean anything anti-Semitic in that. Um, the, the nature of the criticism was simply that um, the Jewish people have been persecuted for thousands of years. There is a natural affinity, therefore, uh, for persecuted groups. Um, this has led to the funding of organizations that uh, is, 
essentially promote any persecuted group or any group with the perception of persecution. This includes radical Islamic groups. Everyone here has seen the, the, the massive demonstrations mm -hmm. for Hamas in every major city in the West. That should be jarring. Well, a, a, a number of those organizations received funding f from prominent people in the Jewish community. Right. They didn't expect that to happen. It, it, but, but if you generically, right. w without condition, uh, sort of fund, if you, if you fund persecuted groups in general, some of those persecuted groups, unfortunately, want your annihilation. And what, I'm, what I meant by that, mm -hmm. when I subsequently clarified, is, is that it's unwise to, to, to fund organizations that support groups that want your annihilation. Is this coming across? My, my, yeah, at no, this it point? is. My, my question to you, though, I, is... I think is logically it, is there, this is, makes a lot of sense. Is there any part of you... I mean, just tell me what happens, <laughs> though, when, once all of this happens. Let's say you fund a group, and that group supports right. Hamas, who wants you to die. Perhaps you should not fund them. Right. <laughs> but, you, but you do... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you. You do appreciate that when you wade into these very delicate waters at these very delicate times, yes. that it can create a real, I mean, as it created headlines for the past two weeks and an economic impact. What, what, I'm just so curious what happened in your brain I mean, when you see all this happening, I, I think are you we, sitting there going, oh my God, I stepped in it, I wish I didn't do that? Are you saying, screw yes. them, I hate these people, no, why no. are they after me? Uh, but all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of that. I mean, uh, I mean, look, I, I'm sorry for that, that, that tweet or post. It was foolish of me. Of the 30,000, it might be literally the worst and dumbest tweet post that I've ever done. Um, and I tried my best to clarify uh, six ways to Sunday. Um, but, uh, you know, at least uh, I think over time it will be obvious that, in fact, far from being uh, anti-Semitic, I'm, in fact, philo-Semitic. Um, and my, all the evidence uh, in my track record uh, would support that. Let me ask um, you this, though. There are people who say crazy things on, on X, as you know. Um, well, maybe you think they're crazy, it, maybe it, they're not. It, 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 the, 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 the aspiration for X is to be the global town square. Now, if you were to walk down to, let's say, Times Square, right. um, do you occasionally hear people saying crazy things? Yes, but, yes. They're not, but they don't have the megaphone, right? And that's, that's the conundrum. Right? No, they can only say it to the 50 or 100 people that are, that are sitting, standing there in Times Square. They don't have a megaphone. I mean, look, the, the, the joke I used to make about old Twitter was it was like giving everyone in the psych ward a megaphone. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that things can get promoted uh, that are negative beyond the sort of circle of, of somebody simply screaming crazy things in Times Square, which happens all the time. Um, you know, so, so the, it, it's, it's actually, it's, it's pretty rare for something, um, frankly, that is uh, hateful to be promoted. It's not, it's not, it's not that it never happens, um, but it's, it's fairly rare. Um, I mean, I would encourage people to look at, for those that use the system, when you look at the, the sort of, the, the feed that you receive, uh, how, how often is it, is it hateful? And over time, has it gotten more or less hateful. And I would say that if you look at uh, the X platform today versus a year ago, I think it is actually much better. I mean, what, what is your personal are you, experience? Are you surprised? I'm just curious, you use this. I use the platform uh, religiously. I, I so will you admit notice. to being an addict. You and notice. I use the for you. And I will, I will say, uh, now the, the problem is because I'm a journalist, I go looking for stuff. Well, that's I'm I'm not just, I'm just saying. <laughs> and, and, and because I and, and I, I also think the algorithm for me personally, because I'm looking for stuff, also is feeding me other things. It, um, well, it, this 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 is actually a, a challenge in that, it, it, like sometimes people will say, like, why is it showing me, uh, you know, uh, posts from this person that I hate? And then we were like, well, did you interact a lot with this person that you hate? Well, yes. Well, therefore, it thinks that you want to interact more with this person that you hate. 
that's like a right. reasonable. Well, let me ask you, you know, do you, 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 you kind of want to have an argument. When you tweet, yeah. Do you ever post. Say, or post? Let's say post. When you post. I mean, listen, I'm open. If right. anyone can I come up with a better word, uh, that would be great. When you um, post, though. But uh, you, the least bad word I can think of is post. Uh, it's a, yeah. When you post, though, do you, are you trying to rile up either a base or an audience? Do you do you, do you recognize the power you have in that? And and also, by the way, not just rile up <coughs> rile up one version of side yeah. of it, but also rile down, which is to say. As I said, there are people who are demonstrably anti-Semitic uh, on, on the site. Who I, I get uh, Jew boy things and all sorts of things that come, sure. come my way. Hey, for um, a while, they thought I was Jewish, so they would, you know, I'd get it too. But, but, but no, but the question is, my name you, is super Jewish. do you ever think to yourself, you know what, I'm going to go online and I'm going to say, these people, I condemn these people that are on my site saying these things. Because I, mean, I, think I have said, a, I have, you no, You say I've condemned anti-Semitism, but do you ever go? Yeah, I said I've condemned, con con I literally, I literally posted, I condemn anti-Semitism in all its forms. Like, that is a literal, I believe, literal post that I made. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, listen, if I can get out the thesaurus if you, you know, and we could, you know. Uh, let me ask you a different question. You, you, yeah. you, you compose it, I'll post it. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> you, um, you, were on a, you were on a podcast uh, about a month ago. And you said something that struck me, um, and it struck me as accurate, came out of your mouth, so uh, hopefully it is. But it, it, I, I'm hoping we go deep on this. Just because it came out of my mouth does not mean it's true. No, no, I, but you, I, said, I you, said my you said my mind is a storm. I don't think most people would want to be me. They may think they want to be me, but they don't know, they don't understand. What did you mean by that? What was, what, 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 your mind being a storm, and I, I think it, I mean, I have known you for quite some time. I think it is a bit of a storm. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, in as much as a, a weather metaphor makes sense, um, I, my mind is, often feels like a, like a, like a very wild storm. Um, I mean, I have, I have a fountain of ideas. I mean, I have more ideas than I could possibly execute. Um, I, so I have no shortage of ideas. Innovation is not the, not the problem. Execution is the problem. I've got a million ideas. I mean, I've got an entire design for an electric supersonic vertical takeoff jet, but I, I mean, I just, if I, I just can't do that as well. I've had that for 10 years. Um, um, I mean, there's a million things. Um, but is your storm a happy storm? No. It's not a happy storm. No. Tell us about that, because I, I think that that actually when people try to really understand you, I think that there's a lot of this comes from some other place, and I, I want to talk about that. What do you think that is? <laughs> we should we need like a psychiatrist couch here or something. Um, You know, I, I think to some degree I was born this way, but and then it was amplified by a difficult childhood, frankly. Um, so, uh, but I can remember even in happy moments when I was a kid that there's just it just feels like there's just a a rage of forces in my mind constantly. Um, but now this, you know, productively manifests itself in technology and building things. Uh, for the most part, so, and I, and I think on balance, the output has been very productive. Um, I think the results, as we you know discussed earlier with SpaceX, Tesla, PayPal, which is you know still going today. Um, the uh, first internet company that I started, in fact, the first internet company I started as of two was um, uh, funded. By a New York Times company, yep. Hearst and Knight Ritter, and in fact, uh, we wrote some of the software for the, the New York Times website, right. um, and we helped bring online several hundred uh, newspapers that previously were only in print. Um, now this is in the 90s, which at this point is like, I'm like a grandpa black, basically. Um, you know, the 90s and internet feels like a pre-Cambrian era when there were only sponges. Um, so, 
Um, anyway, so, it, you know, I feel like a lot of productive things have been done. And you can also look at, te at Tesla as, as being sort of many companies in one. Like our supercharging network is, if it were, it, if, if the Tesla supercharging network were its own company, it would be a Fortune 500 company by itself. Just, just, just the supercharging system. Um, we also make the cells. We, we, we build the power electronics and the powertrain from scratch. Um, we have the most innovative uh, structural design, the largest castings ever used. Um, we have the, the best manufacturing technology at Tesla, better manufacturing technology than companies that have been doing it for 100 years. So, so these, these demons of the mind, are, you know, are, for the most part, uh, harnessed to productive ends. Um, okay, so let me ask a question that about that. But that doesn't mean that once in a while they, you know, uh, go wrong. <laughs> but, but, and this is a question I think a lot of people, you know, are always trying to figure out about not just you, but sometimes themselves. Meaning, what is driving all of this? You're doing all of these things. Do you think it's, it, do you think that you would be as successful whatever success is, if it wasn't being driven by some, I think that there's something you're trying to prove, either to yourself or to somebody. I don't know. We're all trying to prove something. To Maybe prove I'm trying to, to prove it to my mother. I don't know. No. I, if I were to say, describe my, my philosophy, it is a philosophy of curiosity. Um, if, um, I mean, I, I did have this existential crisis when I was uh, around 12, uh, about what's the meaning of life? Isn't it all pointless? Why not just commit suicide? Why exist? Um, I read the religious texts. Um, I read the philosophy books um, that, well, especially the German philosophy books, made me quite depressed, frankly. One should not read Schopenhauer and Nietzsche as a teenager. Um, but then I read. Uh, Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a book on philosophy in the form of humor. And the point that uh, Adams was making there was that uh, we don't actually know what questions to ask. Um, that's why he said that you know, the answer is 42. Like basically, Earth's a giant computer, and, and it came up with the answer 42. But then to actually figure out what the question is, that's the actual hard part. Um, I think this is generally true also in physics. At the point at which you can uh, properly frame the question, the answer is, is actually the easy part. Um, so, so, so my motivation then was that, well, my life is finite, really a flash in the pan in the, on a galactic t time scale. Uh, but if we can expand the scope and scale of consciousness, then we are better able to figure out what questions to ask about the answer that is the universe. And we, maybe we can find out the meaning of life or even what question to, what, what the right question to ask is. Um, you know, wh where did we come from? Where are we going? Um, where are the aliens? Are there aliens? Um, and, you know, these, these questions, you know, and is there new physics to discover? Uh, or is this, because there seems to be some real questions around dark matter and dark energy and... Um, so the, the purpose of SpaceX is to extend life beyond Earth on a sustained basis so that we can at least pass one of the Fermi great filters, uh, which is that of being a single planet civilization. Uh, if we are a single planet civilization, then we are simply waiting around for some extinction event, whether that is man-made or uh, natural. Um, but if you're a single planet civilization, eventually you will, uh, something will happen to that planet and you will die. If you're a multi-planet civilization, you will live m much longer. Also, a multi-planet civilization uh, is, the, that's the natural stepping stone to being a multi-stellar civilization and being out there among the stars. So now this, I think, has two, this, this is not simply a defensive uh, motivation, um, but it is also one where that, you know, that gives meaning, man's search for meaning.
Good point. Can I ask you a different... Um, but this is a, I, I, let me finish this philosophy point, even though it may seem rather esoteric. Um, it may resonate with a few people. Um, we must get past this Fermi filter of being a, a, this great filter of being a single planet civilization. Um, and if we do that, we are more likely to understand the nature of the universe and what questions to ask. Um, if you're a believer in the philosophy of curiosity, then then I think you should support this ambition. Um, and but, but it's more there's being a multi-planet species is more than than simply you know life ins life insurance for life collectively. That's a defensive reason, but but I, but I think also that 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 life has to be more than simply solving one sad problem after another. Uh, you know, th there, have to be, there have to be reasons where you wake up in the morning and you're happy to be alive. There have to be reasons that you, you have to say, why are you excited about the future? Like, what gives you hope? And, and, and if, you, if, you, if you aren't sure, ask your kids. And, the, and, and, and I think, the idea of us being a space-faring civilization and being out there among the stars is incredibly inspiring um, and exciting and something to look forward to. And there need to be such things in the world. Let me ask you a different question about confidence. We were having a conversation here earlier about people um, and where, you're, where people get their confidence from. Some people have great insecurity. Other people uh, have great confidence. And I was thinking about you because you have a very interesting history where people have told you over and over again that you're wrong. Well, sometimes and, they're right. Well, sometimes they are. But I would say that when it comes to Tesla, when it came to SpaceX, people told you that you were crazy. You were out of your mind. This was never going to happen. This was yes. never going to work. But, uh, and so what yes. I'm going to ask you this, yes. though, yes. is now, when people say you're wrong, this isn't right, do you look at that and say, you know what, that's like a red flag for me because you know, I, I've been told no. so often that I'm wrong that I know that I, and I know I'm right because I've had that experience. Or are there people in your life when they say, you know what, Elon, this is not, this is not right. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I think what you're sort of trying to say is that uh, do I at this point think because uh, I've been right so many times when others have said I'm wrong that now I perhaps believe I'm right when in fact I'm wrong? You did very well. <laughs> what do you think? No, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, no, look, here's the thing. Um, physics is un unforgiving. Physics is unforgiving. So. Uh, I mean, I have you know these various little sayings that I've come up with uh, that uh, physics is the law and everything else is a recommendation. Right. Uh, in the sense that uh, you can break any law made by humans, but try breaking a law made by physics. That's much more difficult. Um, so if you are wrong and persist in being wrong, the rockets will blow up and the cars will fail. Right. Um, so. This is, we're not, we're not trying to figure out what, what flavor of ice cream uh, is the best flavor of ice cream. The, right. Like, if, if there's a thousand things that can happen on a rocket flight, and only one of them gets the rocket to orbit. And so being wrong results in failure uh, when dealing with physical uh, objects. So, but that's the interesting part. So now you've built this, th these great companies that physically, the physics of them are enormously su successful. So successful, arguably, that you have leverage over everybody else, right? There's n nobody else can do Starlink. Nobody else can get, I, 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 nobody else can get the, the rockets in, in space yet. Amazon and Jeff Bezos are trying, but they haven't yet. I hope he does. You hope he does? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think, you know, uh, but I, I actually agree with, with, with a lot of Jeff's motivations. Um, I mean, I think, you know, he's, you know, and I, so I'm, let, me put, let me put it this way. If there, if, if there was a button I could press that would delete uh, Blue Origin, I wouldn't press it. Um, so I think uh, it's good that he's spending money on, on um, making rockets, too. Um, 
you know, it's just perhaps he spent more time on it, but, uh, you know, it's up to him. Uh, the, the, uh, but, 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 but I should make a point here. So nothing, nothing any of my companies have done has been to stifle competition. In fact, we've done the opposite. So at Tesla, we have open sourced our patents. Anyone can use our patents for free. How many companies do you know who've done that? Can you name one? I can't. Um, at SpaceX, we don't use patents. So I mean, so once in a while, we'll, we'll file a patent just so some patent troll doesn't right. cause trouble. But it, we're not stopping any. We've done, we've done nothing anti-competitive. We've done nothing to stop I, our I'm not suggesting you at all. No, I, 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 I just want to clarify for the yeah. audience, because some companies have done, done anti-competitive things. I, I, I think the, the strange thing, or the unusual thing, about SpaceX and Tesla is that we've done things that have helped our competition. So at Tesla, we um, have made our supercharger system open access. We've, 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 we've made our charger technology available for free to the other manufacturers. The, the reason I- No walled garden. We could have put a wall up, but, but instead we invited them in. The reason I mention this though is because you've had the success in the physical physics world, you now have these very uh, difficult decisions that have huge impacts on the world that are not physical decisions at all. They're, they're decisions of the mind. They're decisions that you and others have to make. And there's a question whether you should be making these decisions at all. And I, I think about it in the context of Starlink. Uh, obviously, there was the uh, report about uh, how it's being used in Ukraine and, and the Russia war. There's questions about what, you know, Taiwan, whether Taiwan uh, should use it or will use it. I believe they're not right now because they're worried that at some point maybe the Chinese will tell you that you have to, uh, they have leverage over you and you're going to have to turn that off, right? I mean, these are, these are very difficult decisions and I'm so curious how you think about that. And not just the decisions, the fact that you have that power. I, I, just, I think it's important for the audience to understand that the reason I have these powers is not because of some anti-competitive actions, it's simply because we've executed very well. Oh, I'm not dismissing that. I think yeah. there are so many people, by the way, who are huge like, supporters of what you've created. There are created. other satellites out there, you know. But, 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 they're, and, but they're not as good as yours. And, right. the same, and we can say that maybe make the same argument out of the cars and everything else. Yeah. But as a result, that gives you enormous leverage. Right? Okay. I mean, with the exception of, the, by the way, these advertisers who aren't on X, in every other instance, everybody needs you. But, I mean, nobody's... I mean, they use our product if it's better, then use somebody else's product if it's their other product better. And I accept that. And maybe one day somebody I mean, like, else will create I a better mean, product. Is but it like, you know, how, how is it a bad thing to make better products than other companies? Well, and I, I want to just go back to this to the Starlink piece of it, though, because it, that has sort of a geo, geopolitical ramification in terms okay. of your power and how you think about that specific power. And then... Uh, the power that the U.S. government might have either over you or not over you, the power the Chinese government might have over you or not over you, and how those things get used. What, I mean, what are you suggesting? I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question around this, this very idea of how these satellites are going to be used, whether you think that you should have control of them, whether the government should have control of them. Uh, Do you how, trust the government? Well, that's, uh, there's a lot of people who don't trust the government. Nah, exactly. But then this goes back to the trust of you, right? I mean, like I said, we're not the only company who has communication satellites. Their, our satellites are just much better than theirs. So it's not like we have a monopoly. Right. Do, we you just feel, have do you feel like anybody the best has... product. It's not like... Do you feel anybody has leverage over you? I mean, I think at the end of the day... If we make bad products that people don't want to use, then the users will vote with their resources and use something else. Let me pivot the conversation for a second. I mean, um, certainly, I mean, my companies are overseen by regulators, and and while um, you know, once it's, it's since uh, SpaceX, Starlink, Tesla um, are overseen by you know, cumulatively over 100 regulators uh, in, in actually more than that, a few hundred regulators, because uh, you've got, we're in 55 countries. Um, 
if, if you sum up all the times that I had an argument with regulators of hundreds of regulators over decades, it, it can sound really terrible, except but they forgot to mention that there were 10 million regulations we complied with and only five that I disagreed with. <laughs> but they listed all five, the five, and it sounds like, wow, this guy's a real maverick. I'm like, yeah, but what about the 10 million we complied with? Do you, let me, let me one, one related thing on this, and the, the, the leverage of countries and things over you, and regulators. Um, X is this fr free speech platform. You do business in China, lots of business in China. That's an important part of your, your business, I imagine. Uh, well, not SpaceX. How do you think about the leverage that the Chinese have over you? And do they have leverage over you? And how do you feel about, some people would say, is it hypocritical uh, for you to be doing business in China, or frankly, in other countries as it relates to X and other things, that don't follow this free speech path that uh, you have espoused? The best that the X platform can do is adhere to the laws of any given country. Uh, do you think there's something more we could do than that? I think it would be very hard, but I just wonder, given it, the sort of strong philosophical approach that you've, 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 you've been vocal about, whether you say to yourself, you know, maybe I shouldn't be doing business in that country. Uh, well, first of all, Starlink and SpaceX do are no business in China whatsoever. Um, uh, Tesla has one of uh, four factories, four vehicle factories in China, um, and China is you know, I don't know, a quarter of our market or something like that. Uh, and so it's a quarter of the market of one company. Um, the same is true, by the way, of, of all the other car companies. Uh, they also have something on that order of a quarter of their sales in, in China. Um, so if, you, if that's a problem for Tesla, it's a problem for every car company. Um, I mean, I think one has to be careful about not conflating uh, the various companies because I can only do things that are within the bounds of the law. I cannot do beyond that. Um, my aspiration is to do as much good as possible and to be as productive as possible within the bounds of what is legal. More than that, I cannot do. Um, I want to pivot and talk about AI for a moment. We had Jensen Wong here, who's a big fan of yours, as you know. Yeah, Jensen's awesome. Talk about, talked I mean, about bringing you the first box, by the way, yes. uh, with Ilya, uh, interestingly enough. Yes. Uh, uh, back in 2016, I think. There's a video of Jensen uh, and me unpacking the first AI computer at OpenAI. Uh, so I'm so curious what you think of what's just happened over the past two weeks while you were dealing with this other uh, um, headline, series of headlines. There I mean, was a whole other series of headlines open AI, so far, at OpenAI. What did you think? Well, uh, you founded it. Co-founded. Co-founded, yeah. Um, well, well the, the whole arc of OpenAI, frankly, is a little troubling because the, the, the reason for starting OpenAI was to create a, counter, a counterweight to uh, Google, Google and DeepMind, which at the time had two-thirds of all AI talent and basically infinite money and compute. And there was no, there was no counterweight. It was unipolar world. And Larry and Paige and I used to be very close friends, and I would stay at his house, and I would talk to Larry into the late hours of the night about AI safety. Um, and it became apparent to me that Larry did not care about AI safety. Um, I think perhaps the thing that gave it away was when he called me a speciest uh, for being pro-humanity, um, as in, you know, like a racist, right. but for species. Um, so I'm like, wait a second, uh, what side are you on, Larry? Um, and then I'm like, okay, listen, this guy's calling me a species. He doesn't care about AI safety. Um, we've got to have some counterpoint here because this seems like we could be, this is, this, this is no good. So OpenAI was actually started, and it was meant to be open source. Uh, I named it uh, OpenAI uh, after open source. Um, it is, in fact, closed source, super close. It should be, it should be named, renamed super closed source for maximum profit AI. Um, <laughs> so, because this is what it actually is. <laughs> I mean, Faye loves irony. I mean, in, in fact, a friend of mine has this, says, like, the way to predict outcomes is the most ironic outcome is the most, it, it, like, this Occam's razor, 
like the simplest mm -hmm. sort of explanation is most likely. And uh, my friend Jonah's view is that the most ironic outcome is the most likely. And that's what's happened with OpenAI. Um, it's, it's gone from an open source uh, foundation, a 501c3, to suddenly it's like a $90 billion for-profit corporation with closed source. So I don't know how you go from here to there, but that seems like a, I don't know. How you get, I don't know, if, is this legal? <laughs> I'm so, like, this legal? So, but, but, so as you saw Sam Altman get ousted yeah. by somebody you know, Ilya, and Ilya was somebody who was a friend of yours. Yes. You brought him there. Uh, your relationship with Larry Page effectively broke down over you recruiting him away, that's, I think. That's correct. That was the fight. That was the, Larry refused to be friends with me after I recruited Ilya. And so here's Ilya apparently saying something is very wrong. I think we should be concerned about this because I think Ilya actually has a strong moral compass. Um, he thinks about, he, you know, he, he really sweats it over questions of what is right. Um, and if Ilya felt strongly enough to want to, you know, fire Sam, well, I think the world should know what was that reason. Have you talked to him? I've reached out, but he, he doesn't want to talk to anyone. Have you talked to other people behind the scenes? Is this all happening? I've talked to a lot of people. As nobody, I've not found anyone who knows why. Have, have you? I think we are all still trying to find out. I, I mean, look, one of two things is, is either it was a serious thing and we should know what it is, or it was not a serious thing and, and then the board should resign. What do you think of Sam Altman? I have mixed feelings about Sam. I, I do, um, you know, the, the ring of power, you know, can corrupt. Um, and this is the ring of power. So, you know, I don't know. I think, I wanna know why Ilya felt so strongly as to fire Sam. This sounds like a serious thing. I, d I don't think it was trivial. And I'm quite concerned that, this, that there's some you know, dangerous element of AI that they've, they've created. Discovered? Yes. You think they've discovered something? That would be my guess. Where are you with your own AI efforts relative to where you think OpenAI is, where you think Google is, where you well, think the others are? I mean, on the AI front, I'm in somewhat of a quandary here because um, I've thought AI could be something that would change the world in, in a significant way since I was in college, I mean, like 30 years ago. Um, but the reason I didn't go build AI f f right from the get-go was because I, I was uncertain about which, which edge of the double-edged sword was, would be sharper, the good edge or the bad edge. So I held off on doing anything on AI. I could have created, I think, the leading AI company, and kind of open AI actually kind of is that. Um, because I was just uncertain if you make this magic genie, what will happen? Um, you know, whereas I think building sustainable energy technology is much more of a single-edged sword that is single-edged good, making life multi-planetary, I think single-edged good. Um, you know, Starlink, mostly single-edged good. I mean, giving people better connectivity to people that, you know, don't, don't have connectivity or too expensive, I think is very, you know, a, a very much a good thing. Um, Starlink w was instrumental, by the way, in halting the Russian advance, uh, and the Ukrainians said so. Um, so, you know, I think there's, but with AI, you, you've got the magic genie problem. Um, you may think you want a magic genie, but, that, but once you, that genie's out of the bottle, it's hard to say what happens. How now, far are we away from that genie being out of the bottle, you think? We think it's already out. I mean, the genie is certainly poking its head out. Um, the AGI, the idea of artificial general intelligence. Given what you now are working on yourself and you know how easy or hard it is to train, to create the inferences, to create the weights. I hope I'm not getting too 
far in the weeds of just how this works, but those are the basics behind the software end of this. It's funny, you know, all these weights, uh, they're just basically numbers in a comma-separated value file. And that's our digital god, a CSV file. Not that funny. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's kind of literally what it is. So I, I think it's coming pretty fast, you know? Is that, I mean, uh, you, you've, you've, you famously have admitted to overstating how quickly things will happen. But how quickly do you think this will happen? If you say smarter than the smartest human at anything, yep. it may not be then quite smarter than all humans, all machine augmented humans, you know, because we keep people have got computers and stuff. Um, it's a higher bar. But if you say smarter than any, you know, can write as good a novel as, say, J.K. Rowling or discover new physics or invent new technology, um, I would say that we are less than three years from that point. Um, let me ask you a question about uh, XAI and, and what you're doing. And um, because there's an interesting thing that's different, I think, about what you have relative to some of the others, which is you have data, you have information, you have all of the stuff that everybody in here has put on the platform to sort through. Um, and I don't know if everybody realized that initially. What is the value of that? Yeah, I mean, data is very important. Um, you could say d data is probably more valuable than gold. Um, but then maybe you have actually, maybe you have more, maybe you have the gold in X in a different way. In a way, again, that I, I, that I don't know if the public appreciates what that means. Yes, um, X is the, might be the single best source of data. Um, I mean, it is, uh, there are more, you know, people, links that go to, people click on more links to X than anything else on Earth. Sometimes people think Facebook or Instagram is a bigger thing, but actually there are more links to X than anything. You can, there's public information, you can Google it. Okay, let me ask you a... Um, so it, it is, it is uh, where you would find what is happening right now on Earth at any given point in time. The whole open AI drama played out, in fact, on the X platform. Um, so it is one of the, it's not, they're, they're, you know, Google certainly has a massive amount of data, so does Microsoft. Um, so it's not like, but, but it is one of the best sources of data. Um, can I ask you an interesting uh, IP issue, which I think is actually something uh, I can say as somebody who's in the creator business and journalistic business and, and whatnot, uh, or care about copyright. So, one of the things about training on data has been this idea that you're not going to train or, or that these things are not being trained on people's copyrighted information. Historically, that's been the concept. Yeah, that's a huge lie. Say that again? Yes, well, these, AI, well, these AIs are all trained on copyrighted data, obviously. So you think it's a lie when, when OpenAI says that this is not, n none of these guys say they're training on yeah. copyrighted da data. Oh, that's, that's a lie. It's a lie, yeah, straight up. It's a straight up lie. Okay. 100%. So then, Obviously, it's been trained on proprietary data. Okay, so let me ask you a second question, <laughs> which is all of the people who have been uploading... I mean, it's like a one every minute here. Yeah. All of the people who have been uploading articles, the best quotes from different articles, uh, videos, 2X, all of that can be trained on. And it's interesting because people put all of that there, um, and those quotes have historically been considered fair use. Right? Yeah. People are putting those quotes up there. And individually, on a fair use basis, you'd say, OK, that makes sense. But now there are people who do threads. And by the way, there may be multiple people who've done you know, an article that has 1,000 words. Technically, all 1,000 words could have made it onto X somehow. And effectively, now you have this remarkable repository. And I wonder what you, how you think about that, again, and how you think the creative community and those who were the original IP owners should think about that. I don't know, except to say that the, by the time these lawsuits are decided, we'll have digital God. So I asked that ask digital God at that point. Um, these lawsuits won't be decided before on a time frame that is relevant. 
Um, but is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think we live, you know, there's that, I don't know if it's actually a real Chinese saying or not, but uh, may you live an interesting time, right. which is apparently uh, not a good thing. Um, but I, mean, I, I would prefer to, personally, I would prefer to live in interesting times. Um, and, and we live in the most interesting of times. I think, and for, for a while there, I was like really getting demotivated and losing sleep over the sort of the threat of AI danger. And then I finally sort of became fatalistic about it and said, well, even if I knew it was, annihilation was certain, uh, would I choose to be alive at that time or not? And I said, I probably would have choose to be alive at that time because it's the most interesting thing, um, even if there's nothing I could do about it. So then, you know, then basically a, sort of a fatalistic resignation helped me sleep at night because I was having trouble sleeping at night because of AI danger. Um, now, what to do about it? I mean, I've been the biggest, the, the one banging the drum the hardest, by far the longest, uh, or at least one of the longest uh, on, for AI danger. And, and these regulatory things that are happening, the single biggest reason they're happening is because of me. Um, Do you think they're ever going to get their arms around it? We, we talked to the vice president this afternoon. She said she wants to regulate it. People have been trying to regulate social media for years and have done nothing effectively. Well, there's, there's regulation around anything which is a, like a, a physical danger to, or a danger to the public. So car, like cars are heavily regulated, communications are heavily regulated, rockets and aircraft are heavily regulated. Um, the, the general philosophy about regulation is that when something is a danger to the public, that there needs to be some uh, government oversight. Um, so I think, in my, in my view, AI is more dangerous than nuclear bombs. And we regulate nuclear bombs. You can't just go make a nuclear bomb in your backyard. Um, I think we should have some kind of regulation with AI. Now, this tends to cause the AI accelerationists to get up in arms um, because they think AI is sort of heaven, basically. Um, but you typically don't like regulation. You've pushed back on regulators for the most part in the world of Tesla. In the world, so, many, so many instances where we read articles about you pushing back on the regulators. I'm so curious why, in this instance, now you own one of these businesses. As I said a moment ago, um, uh, you, one should not uh, take what is viewed in the media as being uh, the whole picture. Um, there are literally hundreds, I, this is probably not an exaggeration, so there are probably 100 million regulations that, that my companies comply with. And there are probably five that we don't. And if, there, if, if we disagree with some of those regulations, it's because we think the regulation that is meant to do good doesn't actually do good. But that's it is an not interesting thing. Because, regulations for but the, the question is if, if there are clients. laws and rules, whether the idea is that you're making the decision that the law and the rule shouldn't be the law and the rule, and then, right, isn't No, I'm saying you're fundamentally mistaken. And, and, and you, it should be obvious that you're mistaken. Um, my company's uh, automotive is heavily regulated. Uh, we would not be allowed to put cars on the road if we did not comply with this vast body of regulation. Now, you could, you could fill up the stage with uh, uh, literally, you know, six foot high, with the, 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 the regulations that you have to comply with to make a car, right. uh, would make, you, you could have a room full of phone books. That's how, many, that's how big the regulations are. And if you don't comply with all of those, you can't sell the car. And if we don't comply with all the, the regulations for rockets or for Starlink, they shut us down. So in fact, I am incredibly compliant with regulations. Now, once in a while, there'll be something that I disagree with. The reason I would disagree with it is because I think the regulation in that particular case, in that rare case, does not serve the public good. And therefore, I think it is my obligation uh, to object to a regulation that is meant to serve the public good, but doesn't. That's the only time I object, not because I seek to object. I, in fact, I'm incredibly rule following. Let me ask you a separate question, a social media related question. We've been talking about TikTok today, um, ahead of the election. Sure. Uh, TikTok is. What do you think of TikTok? Do you think it's a national security threat? I don't use TikTok. 
Um, Say that again? You don't? I don't personally use it. Um, but for, for people that, for, for, for teenagers and people in their 20s, they seem almost religiously addicted to TikTok. Um, some people will watch TikTok for like two hours a day. Um, I stopped using TikTok when I felt the AI probing my mind, and I don't, it made me uncomfortable. Um, so I stopped using it. Um, I mean, and in terms of anti-Semitic content, I mean, TikTok is rife with that. It has, it has the most viral anti-Semitic content uh, by far. But do you think the Chinese uh, government is using it to manipulate the minds of Americans? No. Is that something that you think we should worry about? I mean, you have, I you have different I states I, I that are trying to ban it. I don't think this is a, some Chinese government plot. Um, but it, 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 it is, the, the TikTok algorithm is entirely AI powered. So it is really just trying to find the most viral thing possible. But it's, it's what is going to keep you glued to the screen. Right. That's it. Um, now, the, on, on sheer numbers, um, there are on the order of 2 billion Muslims in the world. And I think, uh, you know, much smaller number of Jewish people. <laughs> what, 20 million, something? Uh, many orders of magnitude fewer. So if you just look at, at content production, just right. on sheer numbers basis, this is going to be overwhelmingly anti-Semitic. Let, let, let me ask you a political question. Um, and I've been trying to square this one in my head for a long time. Yeah. In the last two or three years, you have moved decidedly to the right. I think. Have I? Well, we can discuss this. I think that you have uh, been espousing and promoting uh, a number of, of, of Republican candidates and, and others. You've been very frustrated with the Biden administration over, I think, unions and uh, feeling uh, like they uh, did not respect uh, what you've created. I well, know. I mean, with, without any, uh, doing nothing to provoke the Biden administration, they held an electric vehicle summit at the White House and specifically refused to let Tesla attend. This was in the first six months of the administration. Um, and we inquired, we're like, we literally make more electric cars than everyone else combined. Why are we not allowed? Why are you only letting UA, uh, Ford, GM, Chrysler, and UAW, and you're specifically disallowing us from the EV summit at the White House? We'd, we'd done nothing to provoke them. Um, then uh, Biden went on to add insult to injury um, and publicly said that GM was leading the electric car revolution. This was in the same quarter that Tesla made 300,000 electric cars and GM made 26. <laughs> Does that seem fair to you? So, but, but tell me this then. It, it doesn't seem fair. Um, and, right. and, and I've asked it repeatedly, and you've probably seen and, me. And by the uh, way, I had a great relationship with Obama. So this is not a... So, but, but, you know, then, but then I, there's this. I voted this. for Obama. I stood, stood in hours for six. I stood in line for six hours to shake Obama's hand. Okay. So, but how, so okay. So let me just ask on a personal level. Uh, this, I can see it in your face. This, this hurt you personally. And it hurt the company too. And it was an insult to, the, the, you know, t Tesla has 140,000 employees. Okay. Of, of the half of them are in the United States. Tesla has created more manufacturing jobs than everyone else combined. So let me ask this then. You, you've devoted at least the last close to 20 years of your life, if not more, to uh, the climate, climate change, uh, trying to get Tesla off the ground, in part to improve climate. You've talked about that. Uh, yeah, a real right-wing motive. Uh, repeatedly. <laughs> got a far right, if no, anything. No, I understand that. <laughs> and then it's so it's... It's, 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 guys, it's right. reverse psychology next level. Well, no, but so here's then the question, which is how do you square the support that you have given, uh, I believe you were at a fundraiser uh, for uh, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, for example, who says that yeah. the climate, uh, climate issue uh, is a hoax, right? Yeah, I disagree with him on that. I, but I would think that that would be such a singular issue for you. I would think that, uh, that the climate issue would be such a singular issue for you that actually it would disqualify almost anybody who, who didn't take that issue seriously. Well, I haven't endorsed anyone for, for president. I mean, I wanted to hear what Vivek had to say, because um, I think some of his things 
are, that's some of the things he says, I think are pretty solid. Um, you know, he's concerned about government overreach, um, about government control of information. The, I mean, the, the, the degree to which uh, old Twitter was basically a sock puppet of the government was ridiculous. Um, so, you know, it, it seems to me that there's, that there's a, a very severe violation of the First Amendment um, in terms of how much a government control, uh, how, how much control the government had over old Twitter. Um, and uh, it no longer does. So, you know, there's a reason for the First Amendment. Um, the reason for the First Amendment for freedom of speech is because the, the, the people that immigrated to this country uh, came from places where there was not freedom of speech. And, and they were like, you know what? We've we, we got to make sure that that's constitutional. Um, because where they came from, if they said something, they'd be put in prison. Or there'd be, you know, something bad would happen to them. So, uh, and freedom of speech, you have to say, when is it relevant? It's only relevant when, when someone you don't like can say something you don't like. Or it, ha it has no meaning. Um, and, and, and as soon as you sort of, you know, throw in the towel and concede to censorship, it is only a matter of time before someone censors you. And that is why we have the First Amendment. Um, could you see yourself voting for President Biden? If, if, it's, if it's a Biden-Trump election, for example? I think I would not vote for Biden. <laughs> You'd vote for Trump. I'm not saying I'd vote for Trump, but I mean, this is, this is definitely a difficult choice here. Yeah. You know. would, <laughs> would, you, uh, would you vote for Nikki Haley? Nikki Haley, by the way, wants uh, all social media um, names to be exposed, as you know. No, I think that's outrageous. Yeah, no, I, we, we, I'm not going to vote for some pro-censorship candidate. Uh, like I said, I mean, I think these, you have to, you have to you know, consider that there is a lot of wisdom uh, in these amendments, you know, and in, in the Constitution. Um, and, and uh, you know, a lot of these, a lot of things that we take for granted here in the United States that don't even exist in Canada. There's not no constitutional right to freedom of speech in Canada. So, uh, you know, it's not, and, and there's no Miranda rights in Canada. People like think like you know you have the right to remain silent. You don't actually in Canada. Um, so, you know, I'm half Canadian. I can you know, say these things, I suppose. Um, but. You know, so, so like, you, you just got, you, you, the freedom of speech is incredibly important. Um, even when people, say, and like, like I said, it's, it's, it's actually especially important. In fact, it is only relevant when uh, people you don't like can say things you don't like. And do you think uh, right now that they're, they're meaningless? You think right now uh, the Republican candidates or the Democrats? are more inclined, I mean, this is where you go to, I assume, to, to, to woke and anti-woke and the mind virus issue that you've talked about. Which party do you think is, is, is more pro-freedom of speech, given all the things you've seen? Because yeah. we also uh, see, you know, yes. DeSantis, uh, you know, preventing people from reading certain things. Maybe you, maybe you think that's, that's, that's correct. No. Uh, look. We actually are in an odd situation here where, on balance, uh, the Democrats appear to be more pro-censorship than the Republicans. I mean, that used to be the opposite. It used to be, you know, the left position was freedom of speech. Um, you know, uh, I believe at one point, um, the ACLU even de de defended the right of someone to claim that they were Nazi or something like that, you know? So, like, they, were, they really were, uh, like, the left was, freedom of speech is, is, is fundamental. Um, and, uh, I mean, my perception, perhaps it isn't accurate, is that um, the pro-censorship is more on the left than, than the right. Um, we certainly get more complaints from the left than the right, let me put it that way. Um, so, um, my aspiration for the X platform is that it is the best source of truth, or the least inaccurate source of truth. Um, and well, you know, I don't know if people will believe me or not, but I think honesty is the best policy, and I, I think that the truth will win over time. And the, you know, we've got this, this great system, and it's getting better, called Community Notes, 
uh, which is fantastic, I think, at correcting uh, falsehoods uh, or, or adding context. In fact, we, we make a point of, of not removing anything, but only adding context. Now, that context could, could include that this is completely false, yes. and here's why. Um, and, and, and no one is immune to this. I'm not immune to it. Advertisers are not immune to it. In fact, we've had community notes, <laughs> which has caused us some loss in advertising, speaking of loss in advertising revenue. Um, when, if a community note, if, an, if, if, if there's false advertising, the community note will say, this is false, <laughs> and here is why. Um, I mean, like, and there's one specific example that is public knowledge, so I'll mention it, which is at one point uh, Uber had this ad uh, which said, earn like a boss. Uh, and it was community noted, if by boss you mean $12.47 an hour, <laughs> this, this did cause at least a temporary suspension of advertising from Uber. I, I got to ask um, you a question that might make everybody in the room <laughs> uncomfortable or not uncomfortable, but it goes to the free speech issue. Uh, the New York <laughs> Times like company and the New York Times uh, newspaper, it appeared over the summer uh, to be throttled. What, what did? The New York Times. Uh, well, we, we do require that... Um, that everyone has to buy a subscription and we don't make exceptions for anyone. And, and I think if I want the New York Times, I have to pay for a subscription and they don't give me a free subscription. So I'm not gonna give them a free subscription. But were you, but were you throttling the New York Times relative to other news organizations, relative to everybody else? Was it, was it, was it specific to the, to the Times? It, they didn't buy a subscription. <laughs> and by the way, it only costs like $1,000 a month. So. If they just do that, then, then they, they're back in, back in the saddle. But, but, but you are so, saying that it was throttled. No, I'm saying... Do, I mean, was there a conversation that you had with somebody you said, look, you know, un, I'm unhappy with the Times. They should either be buying the subscription or I don't like their content or whatever. whatever. Any organization that refuses to buy a subscription uh, is, is, is not going to be recommended. But then what does that say about free speech? And what does well, that say about like th amplifying free speech certain, is not certain exactly voices? Free. It costs a little bit. Right, but that, <laughs> that's it. But that's an interesting. You know, it's like it's like in uh, South Park uh, right. where they say, you know, freedom isn't free. It costs a buck or five or whatever. Um, um, so, but it's pretty cheap. Okay. Um, it's low cost, low cost freedom. I got a couple more questions um, for you. Um, you're headed back to Texas uh, after this uh, to launch uh, the Cybertruck. Yeah. It's going to be a big launch. But I wanted to ask you right now uh, more broadly just about the, the car business and what you see actually happening. Um, and specifically, the government put in place lots of policies, as you know, to try to encourage uh, more EVs. And one of the things that's happened uniquely is you have now a lot of car companies saying, actually, this is too ambitious for us. These plans are too ambitious. 4,000 dealers, I don't know if you saw just yesterday, sent a letter to the White House saying, this has gone too far. You're going too far. You They're had this- Anti-EV? It was, an, it, it was a, this is going too fast, too far, and that there's not enough demand. Our, uh, underneath all of this is this idea that maybe there's not enough demand for EVs, that the American public has not bought into the, I mean, they bought into it with, with, with your company, but they haven't bought into it broadly enough. Well, I think if, if you make a compelling electric car, people will buy it, no question about it. Um, I mean, electric car sales in China are gigantic. Um, that's by far the biggest category. Right. Um, and I think that would be the case, you know. Um, I mean, it's worth noting, okay, so, so the, probably the best refutation of that is that the Tesla Model Y will be the best-selling car of any kind on Earth this year. Of any kind, gasoline or otherwise. Is there another car company that you think is doing a good job with EVs? I mean, I think the Chinese car companies are extremely competitive. Um, by far, our toughest competition is in China. So, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who, who are out there who think that the top 10 car companies are going to be Tesla followed by nine Chinese car companies. Um, I think they might not be wrong. So. Um, China is super good at manufacturing, and the work ethic is incredible. So, um, you know, like if we consider different leagues of competitiveness mm -hmm. at, at Tesla, we consider the Chinese right. league to be the most competitive. Um, and by the way, we do very well in China because our 
China, China team is the best China team. How China. worried are you that, uh, the, that the unionized, unionization effort that just took place uh, at, well, not, I shouldn't say effort, but the, 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 new, the, the new wages and the like at GM and Ford, are, that they're coming for you? And they are coming for you. What is that going to mean to you and your business? Well, I, I mean, I, I think it's generally not good to have an adversarial relationship uh, between um, people on the line, you know, one group at the company and another group. In fact, I mean, I, I, I disagree with the idea of unions, but perhaps for a reason that is different than people may expect, which is I, I just don't like anything which creates kind of a lords and peasants sort of thing. And, and I think the unions naturally try to create negativity in a company and, and create a kind of sort of lords and peasants uh, situation. Uh, there, are, there are many people at Tesla who have come, gone from working on the line to being in senior management. There is no lords and peasants. Everyone eats at the same table. Everyone parks in the same parking lot. You know, at GM, there's a special elevator for only for senior executives. We have no such thing at Tesla. Um, you know, the, and the thing is that I actually know the people on the line because I worked on the line, and I walked the line, and I slept in the factory, and I, and I worked beside them. So I'm no stranger to them. Um, and, and there are actually many times where I've said, well, can't we just hold a union vote? But apparently a company is not allowed to hold a union vote. So it has to be somehow called for, but the unions can't do it. So I've said, well, let's just hold a vote and see what happens. Um. Um, the, the actual problem is, is, is the opposite. It's not that people are trapped at Tesla building cars. The, 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 tra the challenge is, is how do we retain great people to do the hard work of building cars when they have like six other opportunities that they can do that are easier? That's the actual difficulty, is, is that building cars is hard work and, and, and there are much easier jobs. And I just want to say that I'm incredibly appreciative of those who build cars, and they know it, um, you know. So there's, there's, I don't know. Maybe there will be unionized. If, 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 if I say like, if Tesla gets unionized, it will be because we deserve it and we failed in some way. Um, but we, we, we certainly try hard to, you know, ensure the prosperity of everyone. We give everyone stock options. Um, we've, we've made many people who are just working the line, who didn't even know what stocks were. We've made them millionaires. Um, um, so we're going to run out of time. Final couple of quick, quick questions. When do you have the time to, to tweet or to post? How, how do, I, 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 I actually think about it all the time. As I said, well, I, I use it. I the bathroom sometimes. I use it all the time. Meaning, if, okay. if, we were to, if we were to open up our phones and look at the screen time, what does yours look like? Well, about every three hours, I uh, make a trip to the laboratory. And that's um, the only time you do this? <laughs> Seems like you're on there a lot. Um, no, I mean, I, I, there'll be like brief moments between meetings. Um, I mean, it's not, obviously I've, I have like 17 jobs, so, you know, and um, no, no, I guess technically it's work. At this point. It is, but, uh, I, but I'm thinking just in terms of your mind <laughs> share. I mean, by the way, there's a lot of people who should be working who are on, who are on yeah, this te app. Technically, posting on Twitter is, is, or, or X is, is work. It does count as work. So that's, you know, there's that. Um, uh, but no, I mean, I, I think I'm on, well, I, I guess usually probably I'm on for longer than I think I am. But what, I know, but do you uh, think that's you, five you hours the, a day, if four you hours? The, the screen time of like number of hours per week, sometimes that's a scary number. Um, it's probably, I don't know, it's a little over an hour a day or something like that. Just an hour a day? If we really looked at this together, do you have your phone with you? Yeah. You want to look? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. You ready? Screen time. Hit yeah, general. screen time. Sometimes this is a scary number, but... I know, that's why I, I thought... Uh, Uh, I, I just got a new phone, so I think this is not accurate because it says I'm, it's one minute. <laughs> Pretty sure it's more than that. 
Oh, wait, it's a, over the week. Ah, there we go. Yeah, go, go, to, go to the week. Oh, okay, so it's, it's still wrong. It's, it's more than four minutes. <laughs> I, I just got a new phone, so this is not accurate. It literally says four minutes. New phone. Tim Cook's into the phone? New, new phone, who does? Yeah. <laughs> I should ask, by the way, because I just mentioned Tim Cook. Do you feel like you're going to have to have a battle with him eventually? Is that, is that the next fight I mean, I, over the App Store? The idea of making a phone. Oh, phone. What do you mean, like? No, no, no. App store? Over the App Store. Did you ever what? make a phone? Sam Altman's apparently thinking about making a phone with Johnny Ive. I mean, I don't think there's a real need to make a phone. Uh, I mean, if there's an essential need to make a phone, I'll make a phone, but I got a lot of fish to fry. So, uh, I mean, I do think there's a, there's, a, there's a fundamental challenge that phone makers have at this point because you've got uh, basically a black rectangle. Um, you know, how do you make that better? So do you want to do that? What does that, what does that look like in, in, in Elon's head? No, that's literally, yeah, good, good phrase, uh, in the head, a uh, Neuralink. Well, there so, we go. That, that we, so, I, we need to touch uh, that yes, before we're, it's over. We're, we're, you know, the, the best interface would be a, a neural interface directly to your brain. Um, so that, that would be a Neuralink. How far away do you think from that, and how, how excited or scary does that seem to be? And we read these headlines, obviously, about uh, monkeys who died, as you know. What should we think about that? Uh, yeah, actually, the, 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 this is, the, 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 the USDA inspector who, mm -hmm. who came by the Neuralink facilities literally said in her entire career, she has never seen a better animal care facility. It is, we are the nicest to animals that you could possibly be, even to the rats and mice, even though they did the plague and everything. Um, so, uh, it is, it is like monkey paradise. Um, so uh, the, 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 the thing that gets conflated is that there were some terminal monkeys where, you know, this is, long, this is actually several years ago, where the monkeys were about to die. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, we've got an experimental device. It's the kind of thing we should only put on a monkey that's about to die. And then, you know, now the monkey died, but it didn't die because of the neural link. It died because it was, you know, had a terminal case of cancer or something like that. So, uh, Neuralink has, has never caused the death, death of a monkey. It's the best, I, I, unless they're, they're hiding something from me, it has never caused the death of a monkey. And in fact, uh, we've, we've now had monkeys with uh, Neuralink implants for like two, three years, okay. and they're doing great. So, um, and we've even replaced the Neuralink twice. Uh, and, it's, and, and we're getting ready to do the, to do the first right. uh, implants in hopefully in a few months. Um, the, no, the, the early implementations of Neuralink, I think, are unequivocally good. Speaking of the double-edged sword, I think these early implementations are single-edged sword um, because the first implementations will be to enable people who are, have lost the brain-body connection uh, to be able to operate a computer or a phone faster than someone who has hands that, that work. Um, so you can imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than someone um, who had full, full body functionality, how incredible that would be. Well, that's what this device will do. Um, and we should have a proof of that in a human, uh, hopefully in a few months. Um, it already works in, a, in, in monkeys and works quite well um, with, with monkeys that can play video games just using, just by thinking. Um, so then the next application after um, the, the sort of those, you know, dealing with tetraplegics and quadriplegic, quadriplegics is going to be um, vision. Vision is the, the next thing. So it's like if somebody is like, has um, lost both eyes or the optic nerve has failed, basically where there's, they have no possibility of having sort of some ocular correction, the, that, that will be the next thing uh, for Neuralink is a direct uh, vision interface. And, and in fact, then you could be like Geordi LaForge from Star Trek. You could, you could see in like any frequency actually. You could see in radar if you want. Two final questions, uh, and then we're going to do, uh, end this conversation, which I think has taken everybody inside the mind of Elon Musk today. Not as well as Neuralink, will <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> It actually goes to self-driving cars and vision and everything else. Um, and I asked this question of Pete Buttigieg, uh, Transportation Secretary. It's actually something you retweeted, so I wanted to ask you the same question. Um, there's a big question about autonomous vehicles and the safety of them, 
But there's also a question about when it will be politically palatable in this country for people to die in cars that are controlled by computers, which is say we have 35, 40,000 deaths every year in this, in this country. Yeah. If you could bring that number down to 10,000, 5,000, that might be a great thing. But do we think that the country will accept the idea that 5,000 people, that your family uh, might have, have, have perished in, a, in a, a vehicle as a result, not of a human making a mistake, but of a computer? Um, yes, well, first of all, humans are terrible drivers. Um, so people text and drive, they drink and drive, mm -hmm. they get into arguments, they, you know, um, you know, they do all sorts of things in cars that they should not do. Um, so it's actually remarkable that there are not more deaths than there are. Um, what we'll find with computer driving is, I think, probably an order of magnitude reduction in deaths. Um, I think, and now, and the U.S. has actually far fewer deaths per capita than the rest of the world. If you go worldwide, I think there's something close to a million deaths per year due to uh, automotive uh, accidents. Um, so I think computer driving will probably drop that by 90% or more. It won't, it won't be perfect, but it'll be 10 times and better. And do you think that the public will, will accept that? Do you think the government will accept that? Well, at, at, in, in large numbers, the, it, it will simply be so obviously true um, that it, it, it really cannot be denied. And what do you um, think? I know we've talked about the timeline before. And I know people have criticized you uh, for putting out timelines that may not uh, have come true just yet. But what do you think it really yeah, I mean, is? And, I mean, and, and by the way, do you feel like, do you ever say to yourself, oh, I shouldn't have said that? Sure, of course. Um, wait, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm optimistic about, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm like naturally optimistic about timescales, and if I was not naturally optimistic, I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing. Um, I, I mean, I certainly wouldn't have started a rocket company or, a, or like right. a car company if I were, didn't have some sort of pathological optimism, frankly. Um, so, um, as you pointed out, many people said they would fail, and in fact, I, I, actually, I agreed with them. I said, yes, it probably will fail. And they're like, hmm, okay. Um, but I, I thought SpaceX and Tesla had less than a 10% chance of success when we started them. Um, so, yeah, anyway, but, but, but the self-driving thing is, is, I've been optimistic about it. We certainly um, made a lot of progress, if anybody has tried the very, right. has been using the sort of full self-driving beta. The progress is, uh, you know, every year has been substantial. Um, it's really now at the point where, in most places, it'll take you from one place to another with no interventions. Um, and the data is unequivocal that uh, that supervised full self-driving is somewhere around four times safer, or maybe more, than than just human driving by by themselves. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I can certainly see it coming. What, 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 actually, right. really, but do you think it's another five or ten years? I mean, people. No, say no, no, definitely not. Uh, definitely not. Um, and do you feel like investors have invested in something that, that hasn't happened yet? Is, is that is that fair to them? And that's the other question that people have about that. I, well, I mean, I think the, the, they've they've all, with rare, rare exception, uh, thought it wasn't happening. So they were investing in despite thinking, they're very clear that they don't think it's real. So they're not saying, oh, we, we just believe everything Elon says, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, and, but the thing is that, I mean, I would be a fair criticism of me to say that I'm late, but, it isn't, but I always deliver in the end. Let me ask you the final question. I took note of this. It was November 11th, and you took to Twitter, and you wrote only two words. You said, amplify empathy. Right. I was taken aback by that, given all the things that have been going on in the world. Um, do you remember what you were thinking? Well, I think it's quite literally. Ampl I understand it, but do, what, was, what was going on? Why, why did you write that? Well, I was encouraging people to amplify empathy, uh, literally. I, I tend to be quite literal. 
Um, but were, was there something that had happened I mean, that you had seen uh, that you said to yourself, I need to, I want to say that? I think I was talking to some friends and we all agreed that we should try to amplify empathy. And so I wrote amplify empathy. <laughs> um, if you wanted an unvarnished look inside the mind of Elon Musk, I think you just saw it. Look, sometimes um, it's pretty simple, you know. <laughs> uh, Elon Musk, thank you very, very much for the conversation. All right, thank you. Appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Here, take, take that with you for a second. Me, take a big tip. <laughs> I'm just going to say uh, a thank you to everybody who stuck around uh, for what has been a remarkable day. Uh, we are so appreciative of everybody uh, who has been with us uh, for so many years, coming back to this every year. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you had a great day, and uh, I hope we have an opportunity to do this again. Elon Musk, everybody, thank you.